Thank you, Sunil ji. Thank you, Madan ji, for such an awesome session. Thank you. Um, Radhe Radhe, good morning, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Daily Wisdom from Bhagavad Gita session. Radhe Radhe Nitin ji, over to you. Radhe Radhe Pallavi ji, uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Madan bhai and Sunil bhai for a wonderful mm -hmm. session, like always. So good morning, good evening to all of you. Welcome to today's edition of Daily Wisdom from Bhagavad Gita. Uh, always a good time of the day, the best time of the day, I should say, uh, that I look forward to. And I hope the feeling is mutual. So we will continue with our journey. We are going to talk about uh, the differences between the worldly people and people who are elevated or enlightened. Okay. So we'll talk about that and uh, also look at a short lecture from Swamiji as well. So I'm going to share my screen and get started with today's session by invoking the blessings of God and Guru like we always do. Let me share my screen. Are you able to see my screen? Yes. Yes, all good. All right. I'll get started. Uh, with our opening prayers. Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwar Ha, Guru Sakshat Para Brahma, Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha, Vasudev Sutam Devam, Kamsa Chanur Mardanam Devaki Paramanandam Krishnam Vande Jagat Gurum Krishnam Vande Jagat Gurum Radhe Radhe, good morning, good evening, everyone. A very warm welcome. To today's edition of Daily Wisdom. Let's get started. If you're joining in for the first time, a very warm welcome. Uh, at some point, I would like to know more about you. You can raise your hand. Our co-host can uh, take note of who's new for the first time, and then we can invite you over and talk to you as well. Uh, but very warm welcome to all of you. Let's get started. So we are Coming to the end of chapter two, we are picking up the key concepts from chapter two. Uh, this chapter is pretty much the gist of Bhagavad Gita, uh, at least from a uh, breadth standpoint. The depth aspect, anyway, will continue throughout the course of Bhagavad Gita. And like we started this journey about two years back, and right now we are uh, on chapter four. However, for the benefit of uh, all the new participants and even otherwise, I would say, the deeper we go into Bhagavad Gita, the newer facets crop up, right? So that's why we are doing a recap of all the key concepts starting from chapter one. So we completed chapter one and right now we are doing chapter two. We picked up the important shtokas from this chapter and um, similar to that, we have picked up uh, today. There's an important shloka, often misunderstood. So this is one of the shlokas which people who don't understand can actually take it otherwise, right? I've heard it, heard this from a lot of people uh, saying that what is day for uh, is actually night and what is night is actually day and the connotations related to it, but we will look at it in proper perspective today. So I'll recite it and you're welcome to follow along. So with the, after, um, you know, this uh, shloka or maybe sometime next week, I want to really get back to the fundamentals a little bit more. Now, since we have a lot of new participants as well, fundamentals in the sense that why do we need spirituality to begin with, right? There's a reason why we are here and we go back to the building blocks. Who are we? Why do we need spirituality? Is there a plan B? If let's say we don't, we are not interested or we are too busy in our lives and uh, is there a plan B, so to say? And uh, what are the ways in which we can make progress. Are there different choices that we really have or there is something very well defined for us with regards to the path that we can take in spirituality? So all these fundamental questions which 
which are a bit intriguing and at the same time uh, could be confusing as well. We will tackle those questions so that the building elements of spirituality as to what we are doing and why we are doing and how we need to do is very clear as we go through the journey of Bhagavad Gita. So I'll get back to the fundamental building blocks of that. Maybe two or three sessions would be needed, but it will be well worth, um, you know, time spent on revisiting those principles, refreshing those principles so that we know what we are doing and why we are doing. It's very important to have that at our back of our mind as we continue on this journey. So, but today we have picked up this topic. So let's get started on this one. I'm going to recite the shloka and then you're welcome to follow along. Yanisha sarva bhutana Tasyam jagrati sanyami Yasyam jagrati bhutani Sanisha pashyato munehe all right. Do we have anybody? Um, quite a few hands. So let's take. Yeah, quite a few hands. Yeah. Radhe Radhe Ashutosh ji, please go. Radhe Ashutosh ji. Radhe Radhe. Ya Nisha Sarvabhutana Asyam Jagrati Sanyami Yasyam Jagrati Bhutani Sa Nisha Pashyato Munehe Radhe Radhe. Very nice. Thank you, Ashutosh ji. Wonderful. Sandhya ji, Radhi Radhi. Please. Radhi Sandhya. Radhi Radhi. Yani sha sarva bhutanam Tasyam jagrati sayami Yasyam jagrati bhutani Sane sha pashyato munehe Very nice, Sandhya. It's always good to see so many videos turned on today, so... Very nice. Let's continue covering more folks. Radhi, 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 please go ahead. Radhi, Radhi, everyone. Sari Yani Shasarva Bhutanam Tasyam Jagrati Samyami Yasyam Jagrati Bhutani Sani Shapashyato Munehi Very nice, Minaji. Radhi, Radhi. And I see the little boy today as well. I forgot your name. Sorry. Can you? Shri Ramya ji. Radhe Radhe. Please go ahead. Swadra. 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 Okay. We'll tell the shloka. Swadra. Yes. Yanisha. Sarva Bhutanam. Sarva Bhutanam. Satyam. Satyam. Jagrati. Jagrati. Sanyami. Sanyami. Yasyam, Yasyam, Jagrati, Jagrati, Bhutani, Bhutani, Sanisha, Sanisha, Pashyato, Pashyato, Mune, Mune, hey, Radhe, Radhe. Very nice, Bhadra. How old are you? Hare Krishna, Krishna. How old are you? I'm five years old. Hare Krishna. Five years old. He's younger than our young ones. So. Very nice. Good job, Bhadra. Wonderful. All okay. right, let's move on. So he's the youngest participant. Very nice. Thank you so much, Bhadra. Uh, Rahul ji, Radhe Radhe, please go ahead. Rahul. Radhe Radhe. Ya Nisha Sarva Bhutana Tasyam Jagarti Sayami Yasyam Jagrati Bhutani Sa Nisha Pashyato Mune Wonderful. Let's quickly pick up a few more hands and then we'll get started. However many we cover in next two minutes. Suri Prakash ji, Radhe Radhe, please go ahead. Ya Nisha Sarva Bhutanam Tasyam Jagarti Samyami Yasyam Jagrati Bhutani Sa Nisha Pashyato Munehe Wonderful. Very nice. Okay. Apadna ji, Radhe Radhe. Yeah, please go ahead. Radhe Radhe. Ya Nisha Sarva Bhutanam Tasyam Jagarti Sayami Yasyam Jagrati Bhutani Sa Nisha Pashyato Mune. Wonderful. We'll take two more and then we'll proceed. We have some content to cover and a good discussion coming up. So two more and remaining we'll have to take tomorrow. You know, whoever is left today. 
जागृति संयमी यश्याम जागृति भूतानी सानिशा पश्यो मुनहे राधे राधे वेरी नाइस थैंक यू श्याम जी राधे राधे श्याम जी राधे राधे लास्ट वन लास्ट बट नॉट श्याम जी यू हैव टू श्याम जी प्लीज गो है ओके लिखा है बोलने वाले का नाम सो आई थिंक उदय जी प्लीज गो हेड राधे राधेभूता तस्याम जागृति संयमी यस्याम जागृति भूतानी स निशा पश्य तो मुने थैंक यू राधे राधे आई सी कपल ऑफ एंथुसियास सो यस गो हेड मोनिका सिंह अग्रवाल जी एंड देन सुमेश जी बिकॉज़ यू हैव टर्न्ड ऑन योर वीडियो सो होपफुली योर ऑडियो कोऑपरेट्स लेट्स टेक टू मोर एंड देन गेट स्टार्टेड राधे राधे मोनिका जी प्लीज गो हेड राधे राधे जागृति संयमी यस्याम जागृति भूतानी रिमेनिंग विल Give you the precedence tomorrow. Please go ahead, Sameshi, real quick. Yani sa sarvam puta nam asya magre samyami yasa jagrati puta ni sani sa pasya to mune. All right, wonderful, Sameshi. Okay, Rameshi has turned on this video, so last one. Then I'm going to get started. जागृति संयमी तस्याम जागृति भूतानी सानिशा पश्य तो मुने वंडरफुल रमेश जी यस रिया जी विल मेक एन एक्सेप्शन फॉर यू एज वेल ओके गो हेड प्लीज थैंक यू राधे राधे जागृति संयमी यस्याम जागृति भूतानी सानिश पश्य तो मुने थैंक यू वेरी मच प्रागी जी इज द लास्ट वन प्लीज गो हेड प्रागी जी थैंक यू राधे राधे जागृति संयमी यश्याम जागृति भूतानी सानिशा पश्य तो मुन है वंडरफुल थैंक यू वेरी मच सो थैंक यू प्लीज सॉरी एनी बडी ओके अनिता जी प्लीज गो हेड टूड इज योर लकी डे अनीता जी राधे राधे प्लीज गो है राधे राधे टुडे इज गोइंग टू बी द रिसेप्शन यानीशा व्हाट व्हाट इज दैट नो नो गो हेड गो हेड दैट्स ओके थैंक यू यानीशा सर्वभूतानां तस्याम जागृति संयमी यस्याम जागृति भूतानी Guys, you are kidding you. with me today. So let's put a line now. We'll get started. So Jyoti, Golubchi, <laughs> and Manishi. G. Okay, Jyoti, Golubchi, and Manishi. Please note down their name and let's give them the first preference. Yes. Okay, top three for yes. us. Yes. So we have a Jyoti, bit of a content to. Yeah. Yes, Jyoti G. Manishi. No, tomorrow. I said tomorrow. Okay. All right. tomorrow because we have some content to cover so let's get yes, started yes yes all right yeah. sure jyoti ji uh, golab ji and manish ji they can be given the four top three slots tomorrow okay 
but please don't forget to raise your hand okay there was a guy who complained to god that you know i always worshiped you and you never made me hit a lottery win a lottery so god said you know what i was always ready for it you had you should have purchased the ticket first so although i've told you plus don't forget to raise your hand to for other our co-host may even forget so let's get started so this shloka lord krishna is telling arjun so let's understand this shloka because you will come across in a lot of discussions okay with your spiritual friends and if this shloka is often misunderstood so let's understand it very clearly and we will get deeper into this shloka to understand some of the symptoms related to people whose mind is still worldly and people who are on this path and starts getting you know progress start marching towards enlightenment some of the symptoms we will talk about the symptoms of enlightened people but as you progress even though you might be in work work in progress but your symptoms would gravitate towards those as you progress along and that is what we are going to discuss but let's first understand this concept of day and night so lord krishna is saying what all beings consider as day is the night of ignorance for the wise and what all creatures see as light is the day for the introspective sage so let's get started on this topic now what we are going to discuss today is the concept of worldly versus illumined people what are the differences between a sansari jeev the worldly person and an enlightened soul that is what we are going to look into today and have a good discussion on as well so let's get started now lord krishna is using day and night figuratively here okay. day and night is a figurative term in that sense because one aspect is light the other aspect is darkness or the absence of light okay we know how day and night happen right the circadian cycle how the tilt of earth and it rotates around the sun then si- the side which gets exposure to the sun the day is there and the night is on the other side so that is one aspect of it but it has been used figuratively how let's look at it so if you look at the day and night they are yin and yang right two sides so if you look at a lark right so lark the circadian rhythm of humans is day time and so is that of the lark as well however on the other side we have owl so owl what happens so if we have to see something what do we need for that we need light is light enough we need eyes is eyes and light enough now you need to have open eyes so owl the way it is designed is when the light comes it closes its eyes so it's darkness for it it's just the reverse for owl in night it is able to see now what lord krishna is saying in this particular shloka is that people you know let's look at this concept they often confuse the meaning of this verse by taking the world words literally so there was a once a khade shri baba right in india there are too many babas so this one is a khade baba then we have dudha hari baba then we have uh, uh, what is shaka hari baba and then you have naga baba so many babas are there but this one is called khade baba who used to stand and he was claimed to be a big sage and his understanding of this shloka was that he, and he had not slept for 35 years and he would stand in his room resting on a hanging rope under his armpits just to keep himself awake because he took this word literally and said that you know what was the motivation behind this kind of an austerity he would quote this verse from bhagavad gita and say what all being see as night then light and sage sees as day so to practice it he had given up sleeping at night and i've seen people you know one of our relatives also i will not say which relative you never know who's there on this session right so he used to say you know muni doesn't sleep at night we will wake up at night and say muni doesn't speak sleep at night and we quoted the same shloka i was like wonderful so even i didn't have too much of an understanding around that but this is actually a figurative term and that is what we are going to discuss today what it means the true meaning is something much deeper so from this verse so because of it as you see the feet and lower legs were swollen and he could practically do nothing except stand so the motive or the mission of the life became not to sleep because bhagavad gita is saying that what is night 
is day for the Muni and what is day is night for the Muni and kind of a deal, right? So that is the gross misunderstanding of this concept. Now let's try to understand this in true sense in the import of this particular shloka. So day and night, as we see, now let's look at this. Now those who are in mundane consciousness, mundane consciousness means the worldly consciousness. They look to material enjoyment as the real purpose of life. What is mundane consciousness? We have spoken about this concept. We all are afflicted with it. Why? Because our calculations to begin with get wrong. What is that calculation? We start with 2 plus 2 is equal to 7. That is the first fundamental basic mistake we have made of considering ourselves as this body. And then the pleasures of this body as the motto of our life. Pursuit of happiness, it is one of the fundamental rights here in US. Pursuit of life, liberty and pursuit of happiness. That is fine. Pursuit of happiness is not some, something that somebody teaches us. It is comes natural to us as natural as breathing to our existence. However, that happiness is sought for body and the extension of body because we consider ourselves as a body. And because of it, the consciousness that we acquire around all the things that we do in this world are centered around worldly consciousness. What is, what is going to give pleasure to this body? What is going to give pleasure to these senses? You know, we are talking about those five senses. The senses are part of our body, material body, and so is our mind. And the entire life passes by just seeking pleasures for our senses alone. And that becomes mundane consciousness, worldly consciousness. If we limit our life just to cater to the gratification of these senses alone. And that is what we are discussing here right, in this chapter. So Lord Krishna is saying, if you are limiting yourself to this mundane consciousness and you seek material enjoyment as the sole purpose of life, then that is called night. Okay. On the other hand, people who have an awakening or start, start, you know, uh, acquiring spiritual understanding, they consider the wise with the divine knowledge and they see sense object as harmful for the soul and hence view it as night. So this is seen as a night by the wise. What? The worldly consciousness. When people operate with worldly consciousness, they go for it, do this, this should be the priority of life, this is what you should be doing. All that is seen as darkness or night by the wise people when they start progressing spiritually. So this is the first difference, day and night, that we have to understand. Okay? It's the figure, it's not the literal meaning. What is the second one? As an extension to this particular argument, now every they consider the opportunity for worldly pleasures as the success of life as day and deprivation from sense pleasures as darkness or night. Okay. This is day and night for worldly people with worldly consciousness. Now, if they get worldly pleasures, that is considered as joy, pleasure, or the real success in life. You know what? This guy went for a vacation. You know what? They can afford a yacht. You know what? They can now afford a spacecraft to go to Mars. So it cannot end. Those are attributed as successes in life. And that is considered as night. And um, so worldly consciousness, it is considered as day, but for the wise, that is night. Because they know that these sense pleasures that we go after are truly a poison for us. It's like that poison which does not give an immediate result, but it is truly harming us. When we are going for sensual pleasures alone, it is building our sanskars. It is taking us further away from God consciousness. And it is actually uh, entrenching us further into this material world with the belief that, you know what, there is happiness in this world only. And I'm going to extract the maximum juice out of it. And one day I'll be like, ah, I'm done. So that is the problem. On the other hand, if you look at it, the day, they consider refraining from the objects of senses as elevating to the soul and hence look on it as day. 
So this is the true difference between day and night. What is day for worldly people is night for wise. And what is day for wise people is night for the worldly people. Now worldly people, I will, maybe some of you can relate to that, uh, some of the concepts that I'm going to talk about in the next slide. And we can relate some of our experience around it as well. But this is something you would experience as you keep progressing on this path. Okay. Let's move on. Now, these connotations of the words, Lord Krishna states, what is night for the sage is day for the worldly minded people and vice versa, as we have seen. Now, let's go further. So here you see, this is our intelligence. And it's either material or worldly. We will have, we will have tuned it to one of these two. Okay. Now, on the material consciousness would tell you to apply the senses for unrestricted enjoyment. We don't restrict it unrestricted that becomes the motto of our life right? when we are in the worldly consciousness on the other side we have spiritual consciousness here to understand that sense indulgence needs to be restricted moderated and directed towards spiritual pursuit the second one is they have given up the material enjoyment and now engaged something which is vague it completely doesn't any sense to the materialist there is no understanding whether spiritualist is right or wrong so the materialist sees the spiritualist sleeping in the enjoyment of life they say that you know what are you doing in life basically you are wasting your life in all these things that you are doing you know how boring it is spiritualist sees the materialist as he has gotten this elevated consciousness now he's not taking life in spirit is wasting the opportunity of human birth is a spiritualist point view, point of view of, of a materialist. And materialist is sleeping, materialist sees spiritualist as sleeping. So the feeling is mutual on both sides. Right? There is a beautiful lecture from Maharaj. He says this, a spiritualist people who are on the path of spirituality, they consider other people in the world as mad. You know, what are they doing? On the other hand, people are on, on the material world, they look upon as people who are doing Hare Krishna, Radhe Krishna, Jai Siya Ram as mad. So basically, the entire world is mad because both of them are considering each other mad. Is there anybody new, normal there at all? No, right? This person is thinking, this person is mad, you know, and this person is thinking, the worldly person, this person is mad. I get to hear this all, all the time now. I've gotten used to it, right? People say you are, I mean, they used to say, I mean, maybe they can say even now, you're young, what are you doing? You know, go out, party. This is the time to enjoy life. And you've started doing all these things, focus, focus stuff. Um, you know, all this can wait. You still have time to retire and just make the most of life. And all those things do keep coming up. But how you can't explain them, right? What's going on here? It's an internal matter. But yes, they consider this side of people mad who has gone really mad. You know, the other day somebody was telling me, you know, you recite shloka and stuff like that. They had some puja. I said, can you do that puja for us as well? I said, I'm not a pandit. Ji, okay. Reciting shloka doesn't mean you become a pandit. So anyway, people think they are like out of their mind and that's all they do. And I don't know, some kind of a weird look people will start developing towards you. And as you keep on elevating, I mean, trying to work on yourself, you look upon them as, you know, crazy people, why they keep on wasting time and all that stuff. So these things do happen. I mean, you get beyond that as well after a while, but this is the viewpoint from both the sides, right? Completely, uh, the feeling is completely mutual. So this is how it goes. And there's another lecture. I'll get into that a little later. Let's complete this uh, comparisons, compare and contrast between the two now. They are unaware of infinity, but very much awake to the finite things in the world, right? The infinite potential aspect is completely Missed, missed by them. Oops, what happened? Something is happening. Give me a sec. Sorry about that. Okay. So, the, the finite things of this world are very, very captivating for worldly people. And because of the identification with the body, limitation is experienced, right? That is how their being existence goes. So, they are completely opposite views if you look at it on both the sides. And uh, it just signifies ignorance on one side. Night signifies ignorance. And world is the same. 
the realized person's experience is just the opposite of a common man the world is exactly the same for both but their experiences are varying now we will look at the difference between their experiences as well but this is how it goes there's another lecture from rajin sam ji also says see it's like if if you if you have a if you are, let's say you have a play, a herd of people at a place who are without nose without nose they are called in hindi nattas right and all of a sudden a person with nose comes they will start making fun of him you know that guy with nose has come is not cool so this is how it goes because majority of this world is people with worldly consciousness so when saints come they start making fun of them you know baba ji has come now there might be other baba ji's also which might be faking becoming a baba ji but even when the saints come if you look at the history of saints everybody was given a hard time by worldly people they don't they don't take them and they don't even accept them as well so forget about people who are trying to work on themselves and trying to make a difference to their spiritual life you will also face it to a limited extent because people will think you know what has happened this guy looks you know looks normal but acts crazy okay it's a very normal reaction that you'll get from people and you'll get used to it after a while but it happens why because now you will we have this bias for sorry about that we have this bias for things that everything has to fit within the model that we have for the world in our mind and if something doesn't fit into that model it makes us uncomfortable and because it makes us uncomfortable and we cannot think deep the easiest and the most convenient thing is to judge people and and force fit them into your preconceived notions about such things that is what the process how the process goes you know these people are crazy you know you should limit it you have been brainwashed and all that stuff will happen so what is day for a wise person and the wise person understands you know this is waste of time i have to earn parmat this is a golden opportunity i have gotten as a human and time is limited all those concepts you know you when you start relating to those concepts you start valuing time you start valuing where your time should be going however for worldly consciousness people it it just doesn't make sense they said how can you miss out miss out on so much of fun that is going around in this world and start doing all these things okay now the irony of this whole different paradigm on both side is we we'll look at the experience of both and then see who is actually um on the right track and and uh, how we can put some kind of an analogy around that as well okay i'll get into that but let's look at a quick beautiful short lecture from swami ji to recap some of the concepts that we are talking about in this last few shlokas so let me know if you are able to clear the volume it's a very small lecture we'll hear that and then we will proceed further so give me a sec are you able to hear it yes he chara ta ha ti what an undisciplined god for one who never unites the mind with god okay i'll play it from where you need to be hearing from Sri Krishna says, "Arjun, just like the wind would carry away a boat without anchor in the high oceans, that is the strength of the senses." How many kinds of desires are there? Predominantly, five kinds: the desire to taste, to smell, to see, to touch, and to hear. God has given us five senses and we seek the objects of these five senses and the whole world is a subject of our senses but how dangerous are these desires kuranga matanga patanga bhringa meena hata pancha bhirev pancha eka pramadi sakathanna hanyate yah sevate pancha bhirev pancha 
the elephant desired touch of the female elephant. The hunter placed the she elephant in a trap and the male elephant was ensnared to its death. The deer loves sweet melodious sound. The hunter starts the melody. The deer is enchanted to it and is shot. The fish was trapped by its desire for taste. The insect was attracted by sight to the fire and got burned to death. The bee was enticed by the aroma. It sat on the lotus and in the evening as the lotus was closing, its attachment prevented it from flying away until it got trapped in the flower. An elephant came by, broke the lotus, ate it, and the bee met its death. These creatures are dying because of the desire of one of their senses. Yasevate pancha bhireva pancha. What will happen to those humans who indulge in the gratification of all their five senses? This is desire. And if some fortunate soul gives up desire, the Vedas say that person becomes like. God. Yada sarve pramuchyante kama yesyaradishritaha atha martyo mrito bhavatyatra brahma samashnute. The Katopanishad is stating that fortunate soul who has eliminated desire, brahma samashnute, becomes God like. Vimunchati yada kaman manavo manasisthitan tarhyeva pundari kaksha bhagavatvaya kalpate. Srimad Bhagavat Mahapuran states the same thing. If you are able to give up desires, bhagavatvaya, you will become like God. Yona kamayate kinchit. Brahma Bhuyaya Kalpate, the Mahabharat is saying the same thing. And this is the peace formula given by Lord Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita. How will you get peace? He says, give up desires and find unmitigated peace. The peace that surpasseth all understanding which can never be snatched away. That is why the four golden truths stated by the Buddha are there is suffering in this world. The second, that suffering has a cause. The third, the cause of suffering is desire. And the fourth, if desire is eliminated, suffering will be overcome. So the Vedas and other scriptures as well have pinpointed desire as the root cause of all our problems. So Sri Krishna warns Arjun that worldly enjoyment, sensual enjoyment is day for worldly people. But the sage considers it as gross ignorance as gross darkness because there is no fulfillment and the worldly people look on meditation, austerities, devotion as night. So he says, Arjun, what the worldly people consider as day, the enlightened sage considers as night. And what the enlightened sage considers as day, the worldly people consider as night. So this contradiction exists, but the way of peace is the way of light. And what is that way of peace? If we can free ourselves from attachments, living in the world, 
we will not have the world living in us. All right. So hopefully that was a quick recap of what we have been discussing. Now is desire good or desire bad is something we are going to talk about tomorrow. It really depends. And we will look at uh, that aspect more tomorrow. But let's discuss some more differences between the experience of Sansari Jeev and enlightened souls and get a discussion going on that. Yes, Sandhya, you had a question? Um, sorry, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Yes. There's an anonymous question. Can I just... Yes. How do we deal with situations when our own family thinks we have gone mad? When our own family members have gone mad? No. <laughs> When we are spiritual, but our family thinks we have gone mad. Like we were discussing, right? Others around us think like that. But what if our own family thinks like that? That's the question. Uh, it's again about... So we have to smartly show them we are normal, okay? At least that, that is what I would do. I have shown um, that I've gone mad because in, when I was introduced to spirituality initially, I would only talk about, you know, who Krishna is. Do you even have a clue? You know, do you understand this concept? This is how I would talk to them. And I would wear spirituality on my sleeve all the time. Uh, and uh, my my parent, my mom, she freaked out. I mean, she's there on the session as well. She was like, and then she had very good company, you know, who sung of our relatives, who said, your boy, now he will be brainwashed and he's gone. Okay, so get prepared to lose your boy. Because he will become a Baba, he will not get married and this and that. I said, you know what, if that happens, I put fuel to the fire. I said, if that happens, you know how lucky you will be. Started telling about Prahlad and this. So they were like, he's completely gone. Now I realize in hindsight, when people start considering you mad, it's, it's not an accomplishment because you still have to operate in the world. You've got to be a little tactical and smart with them. You know, spirituality is, you know, when you get that rush initially, it, it gives you so much of immense joy that that is the only thing you want to talk about, which is fine. But now I've, I've, over, the, over the years, I have learned it to digest it, okay? And, and be able to navigate with people smartly because not everybody's up for that message. So you just talk to them what they need to hear. And even then you could be switched off and they are just talking. Just say yes to their last thing and you do your own thing inside your so it's a spirituality is not something you have to do it on the outside it's an internal thing and secondly you know you figure out what are the non-negotiable things you have to deal with in your family and just deal with them tactically and smartly buddhi in the world man in god that is enough because if they keep considering you mad then it's not good for your spiritual journey because they will start putting barriers impediments because their self-interest is going to get harmed now you know whatever they are perceiving that happiness from you as a son as a daughter when they think it will get obstructed, they have to answer all the other relatives why your son and daughter is not doing what other son and daughters are doing at this age. Then they will not be able to face that question. It will give them terrible dreams. Okay, And that those dreams will be passed on to you because you are not fulfilling their dreams now. Okay, So you need to navigate it very smartly. Apply buddhi. Uh, it's usually not a good idea to wear your spirituality on your sleeves and you know start troubling everybody around. Make it a something which you can uh, sustain uh, smartly and uh, and uh, as, as privately as possible with like-minded people. That is what I would do because I've gone through this journey. It happens, you know. The whole world, you just want to scream and shout at them. What are you doing? Why are you wasting time? I don't want to do this. I'll give up this. I'll give up that. And then it becomes a mess all around. So you've got to care, carefully navigate through that initial euphoria that we feel. I'll tell you, see, we have gotten just a little bit of bliss and we are not able to handle it with the world around. Gopis got the ultimate bliss that Jivatma could get in Maharas. And you know how Gopis were? They were not missing even a single step. Even a single step in that, you know, step by step, they were matching Krishna at that point because they were able to digest that bliss also and did it to perfection. So that is how we have to become. So as you progress on this path, there will be newer and newer, fresher, better experiences you will come across. If you're not able to digest this, then it will become a problematic, right? People get a little bit of bliss and then they start making everybody dance also in temple, right? You come, you have to dance with us and do this and do that, right? 
So all that is fine, but we have to be careful that people should not construe it as mad people and then they don't start putting impediments to our spiritual lives. And that's how I'll, I'll deal with it. I'll just try to act normally, even though I might have gone mad in their perspective from inside. So that's how I'll handle it. Hope I answered um, your question. Yeah, the anonymous question asker has said that it's a wonderful answer. And uh, Lakshmi ji is Thank you, you Anonymous ji, uh, whoever you are. And Lakshmi ji has also given her response for this. So I'll just quickly read it. In such okay. situations, just ignore, ignore. After some time, they either learn truth from us or they move away from commenting on us. Yeah, whatever works basically. Whatever strategy works and not putting impediments to your own spiritual journey. Yes, Yotiji, you wanted to add something to that. And after that, I want you to, with a quick show of hands, those of you who are new to these sessions, maybe a couple of sessions you have attended or first time, at least we can take a quick note of you and would love to hear from you in one of the sessions as well. So with a show of hands, you can tell that. But Jyotiji, please go ahead. Um, I, I completely agree with everything that you said. I just want to supplement that with one uh, Leela that Bhagwanji showed in Bhagavatam, where uh, Bhagwanji's uh, gopas get hungry and they go and ask. Uh, so Bhagwanji sends them to the, uh, there's a yagna going on and he says, go and ask them for food and they'll give you because you can say that Krishna and Balram are hungry. So they go and ask and uh, the, the, the people doing the yagna, they, they send them away saying, nobody eats until the yagna is over and we have done the Purnahuti. I don't care even if Krishna is hungry. So then um, they, the gopas come back hungry and they ask and they tell Krishna, Tera to naam bada tha, mujhe kisi ne khana nahi diya. So Bhagwanji sends them back to the Brahmin's wives this time. And the Brahmin's wives, uh, well, they carry all the food that they have prepared for bhoga to uh, the gopas and, and feed Krishna with their own hands. So at that point, the Brahmin's wives say, we have uh, a ditch society and we have come into your Sharan. Now, what do we do? How can we go back to our husbands? So Bhagwanji says, no, go back and they will accept you. We are not at that stage where we are, where we are doing drug seva to Bhagwanji, but Bhagwanji eventually will awaken that mercy on the society and allow them to allow us to live our lives as spiritualists and allow us to continue but until then we have to do what uh, Nitinji said and uh, be political about it. Radhe Radhe. Beautiful point. Thank you Jyotiji for saying that, telling that very very true. See as a devotee we, we have to dedicate our acts like we have so many bona fide paths given even Bhagavad Gita right? Karam path is there, Gyan path is there, Jap, Tap, Yoga, all that stuff is there. But for a devotee, whatever they do, Karam is for the service of God. Right? If they do Gyan, it is to cultivate or develop more love for God. If they do Yoga, it is to keep themselves fit so that they can serve God. Right? So everything is directed towards God. But if you start wearing that on your sleeve, the world will get extremely uncomfortable. I'm telling you, whoever it is, they will get uncomfortable. And the direct reason for that is, no matter who it is, unless you have become a devotee, a true way, basically devotee, um, you will always put some kind of a barrier there, right? They will say, no, you know, the argument, common argument, the worldly people will give you. You know, God only has sent us to this world. So we have to do this also. Don't go excessive into that. Those kind of arguments will come without understanding that the real purpose of human life is to progress spiritually. You know, don't do that. We also do this puja part. You know, you should do it in limit, this and that. All kind of arguments will be presented because people do get uncomfortable. So it's very important to protect your devotion and stay away from things that can, that can actually be uh, counterproductive to your spiritual journey, especially the support that you need from closed near and dear ones. If they start getting upset on you because your spirituality is coming in their way and you're not able to navigate through it and you have started taking it too se so seriously that it has become very conspicuous, then it can be very problematic on this path. Great. So let's look at some of the symptoms now. Now, they are just frame of references around it. I mean, 
they party hard sansari jeeves they party hard and begin their day during the night and go to bed early in the morning okay now let's look at some of these symptoms have been part of that as well not that i've changed getting up but there's still a transition and they awake during the brahma muhurat at least that's what they strive for okay enlightened people or who are on this path the other one is negative outlook on life negative they are they typically pick up some kind of a problem in their life okay that attitude see it is like does god talk to us now if you remember this thing always next time you have a negative thought you will always check it you have an ability to check it immediately now when we um, when we feel bad about something start feeling bad bitter negative then god is not pleased at that moment he is telling you that i am also not pleased and when you feel positive joyous energetic and you are full of enthusiasm that that is when god will tell you i am i am fine i am i'm pleased with you that feeling itself will be reinforced so we need to refrain away from negative outlook on life that's fine even if you have to deal with negativity we brush it aside as quickly as possible because um, that's not good for our spiritual journey and it dirties our heart in fact when we dwell too much upon somebody somebody else fault that fault will find its way in you also that is how this principle of attraction works so stay away from that par dosh dekhu nahi govind radhe par ninda karu nahi aisa bana de right radha govind geet says that so it's a very powerful line so positive outlook is good it's again a mindset thing so if you get into a negative trap because of whatever reason let's get out of that mindset if you want to progress spiritually and if you are serious about welcoming lord krishna in your heart then they are takers always looking for their own benefit worldly people what is in it for me is the operating world for that and enlightened people they are actually they are givers at every level material physical emotional intellectual spiritual it's all about giving what can i share and make make it better for you okay that is the big difference it's like take 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 here you have give 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 big difference what else then constantly agitated and depressed that is another symptom oops i don't know what's going on today okay so they are contented and happy okay that's the next symptom they devolve they keep on going downhill in life there's no other way maya will not take you up upward direction anyways and these people are evolving if you can spiritually evolving they experience finitude caught up in changing phenomena of the world they experience infinite established changeless brahman rooted in the imperishable okay they are aware of just this life life is like an ice cream enjoy it before it melts they are aware of multiple lives and our true nature they say life is like a candle so so for others you will accrue better karma now who is a bigger renunciate here the worldly people or the people who are you know who is a bigger renunciate right one of the arguments that worldly people present to spiritual people as you know you guys are giving up happiness you guys are big renunciates tyagis who is a bigger tyagi here just look at the symptoms who's more peaceful who's more content who's evolving who's having positive outlook who's feeling more joy aren't these the things we all crave for and then if you are getting the things which are on the right right hand side then who's a big renunciate in this world the one who's wearing a new shoe comfortable shoe or the one who's wearing a worn torn old biting shoe people on the left hand side let's get the discussion going on this okay any announcements before we get a little deeper into this discussion it's a very important question to think about we'll get into this discussion but let's make quickly announcements while we have everybody here and if you are new we would love to hear from you at least on the feedback tracker i hope the link has been posted please yes. mention if you've been attending these sessions of late you started you know maybe few sessions or your first session i would love to hear from you and get in touch with you as well uh, and any announcements let's quickly make those announcements i know family camp is already open the early bird goes until march that is one announcement i remember but if there are any please go ahead and make it and then we'll get the discussion going on this one thank you nitin ji uh, radhe radhe please fill out the attendance tracker and mark your attendance please provide your feedback comments and questions nitin ji personally takes look at it and i have posted the link in the chat window 
Apart from that, we have announcements regarding Swamiji's upcoming India tour. Uh, please uh, note the date. In Chennai, uh, it's 7 to 9 December, so already started. And Hyderabad, 10 to 14 December. Bangalore, 16 to 18 December. And Banara, 25 to 31, 31st December. And I have posted the uh, link for the uh, more information to register also in the chat window. All right. Uh, now about the Bhakti Yog Sadhana Shivir, it's uh, going to be 25th December to 31st December. Uh, please find more information about it. I'm going to, oh, I already posted that in the chat. Uh, please do uh, uh, look at the uh, link and get more information about it. It's in uh, Banara, Odisha. And uh, the other upcoming announcements are about the Bhagavad Gita recitation sessions, which are starting from Thursday, 7 p.m. CST. And that will be Friday, 6.30 a.m. IST. And that will be in the same Zoom link. And do check out the Rudra Vishesh that happens every Monday and Hanuman uh, Puja that happens Tuesday. And we have some beautiful reels and videos. You know, you can check out on YouTube and Instagram for our kitty. Oh, that's another yeah. thing I wanted to let you know about. Yes, I can the... post those YouTube links as well. And please fill out the feedback tracker as well, especially if you started joining the sessions new. I'd love to hear from you. Okay, now let's get, uh, maybe we can take a few before we get into our devotional segment today. Quite a few hands are raised. Yes. Uh, let's take, I think Nilesh is his camera on, so let's give him the first privilege. And then we yes, can... Yes, sure, Nitinji. Yeah, Nilesh Ji, Radhe Radhe, please go ahead. Radhe Radhe Nitinji. So I was thinking about this, the, the slide which we have here, and we, we talked about it a couple of days back, that the, there's a play of the gunas that come into even in our daily life, right? So sometimes we feel one, sansari, and then there are times when we feel the other side. So the gunas are constantly changing. And it's not always you are black or white, right? So I think a lot of times for me, it's basically the neutral. It's neither this or that. But then at some point, you feel more strongly towards the spirituality or, or the other side. Yeah. So yeah, that's true. It's a play of guna, I get that. But then the other aspect of it is you have a choice. Would you let your guna drive you in an autopilot mode? Or would you rather take control of your gunas and say, I'm going to, you know, um, transcend my guna or, or override my default mode at this point, right? For example, mm -hmm. a thief might be going there to steal, right? His propensity or the tendency or his guna might be in tamas that, okay, I have to steal. But if you have gotten exposure to the right knowledge, there are a lot of stories in our scriptures talk about, you know, there was a thief who went to Raja Bhod's kingdom and when he tried to steal gold, all of a sudden, Garkum Narkumbhi uh, Narak came to his mind in Garud Puran that if you steal gold, it is one of the Panchi Mahapap. And because although he had that tamas going on, but that immediately that knowledge came and he override, overrode that. Right? So we have an ability to override our dominant guna at any point in time. Otherwise, what will happen? It is a done deal. We are always programmed. We are always in autopilot, right? We can complain to God that God, my gunas were driving me. I couldn't, couldn't have helped but do this, but what, what my guna told me to do. So the fact that the choices you made in the past define your current gunas and the choices you make in the present will define your future predominant guna. So you can actually override your dominant guna with knowledge and not let your gunas happen to you and dictate you like an autopilot at that point. And that is the whole idea of spirituality where you take control, have Sakshi Bhav, witness consciousness. Hey, my mind has started playing tricks again. It is getting into that mode of depression. Now you with the knowledge, you start beating it. No, I don't need to get into that mode. I don't need to find faults. I don't need to get into negativity because if I'll do that, scriptures tell us I'm dirtying my antakaran. I'm negating all the good work that I've done. I'm eroding my meritorious deeds. So with knowledge, we beat that. And that's the, that's the way, basically. But yes, it's a good thing. I mean, you can actually read your gunas. And you are not obliged to write those gunas. You have a choice even there. 
that's where the intellect you have to supply with the right knowledge yes you, the intellect you arm it with the right knowledge and keep contemplating upon it so that it doesn't slip and that is the whole idea and take help from god say god i need your help you know if your maya energy is very powerful i need your help in you know making a difference and god is seated within the day you start making an effort he will start supplementing it and providing his inspiration he'll, he'll do a knock knock before you would simply do it now you'll get a knock knock okay that starts happening you'll realize it yeah thank you nitin ji thanks nilesh ji for your question sam ji radha radha question that was yeah that yes let's hear under nitin ji under the enlightened soul there is givers so they are givers at uh, all levels material physical i didn't understand spiritual means we can understand but uh, the other ones that to for normal people do they, so they are, give see, enlightened people are the ones who have already become siddh okay but if you are on the way to enlightenment then also you start aligning to those principles so material means they will use their means whatever to serve people right it could be your money it could be your property it could be anything then the physical <laughs> means you start giving your time your body also to those causes emotional means you are always there to empathize with people intellectual spiritual anyway we understand right so they direct every fiber of their being towards service and nothing for their own self because they have already achieved the purpose of life they have nothing to gain anymore it's only the material, the material people will be, um, go on using them go on using them yeah if they can use it for their benefit sure sure okay. i mean if they can use it for their own benefit sure see the same thing can become a poison or nectar depending upon how you are using it if material people use it for their spiritual growth sure great if they are using it uh, for their uh, you know just for their material things uh, even the saint won't bestow those that those kind of things for them right saints do not give you material boons typically but if if something you are getting from them as part of their grace and you are misutilizing it then you are accruing karma and nothing else right mm -hmm. you are not using it basically to the best possible extent in that case yeah thank you samji so you get a scholarship whether you drink or you study or get some books the choice is always yours there is a price tag for everything that you do okay yeah thanks nathan ji radhe radhe sandhya ji please go ahead yes sandhya uh, radhe radhe so yeah i mean answer to your question of course sansari jeev are the bigger renunciate because whatever we little apparent happiness we seem seem to exist in this world is nothing 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 in comparison to the real happiness which is god right true and uh, just one more point so like here we have highlighted all the differences there is one similarity that i uh, heard and i really like which is uh, basically both of them are drunkards one of them like sansari jeevas are drunkards in material world and enlightened ones are drunkards in the love of god so very true oh, i really love so I beautiful beautiful observation actually we are high on the uh, nasha or the intoxication of world that is why we keep repeating here we are drugged with the world we want more and more of it and then when you start developing spiritual awareness and start having that awakening you get drunk on god's love then you start tasting that you say oh my god i had never tasted something or experienced something like this before and that is how that this whole continues the worldly people will not understand they will think you know these guys they waste time or something bad has happened that's why they keep on doing kirtan they will never understand because they have not taken that leap as yet right they will think you know and the the real thing is maharaj ji says that the real tyagis are worldly people they have they, they have said you know rejected god to have rejected the biggest bliss possible in their life knowledge uh, bliss joy peace, peace. freedom from uh, the shackles of mind everything they have rejected why they want to do potluck okay why because they enjoy uh, the worldly association i mean 
it's it's it seems a little awkward but that is how it is because they have never been exposed to anything more or bigger than that right it's like if somebody has spent their entire life on a margo tree on a neem all they have tasted is neem and all of a sudden you tell them you know why how but how you know how sweet barfi is how will they be able to understand that unless they have tasted it once they don't even know what sweetness is that is how it goes so sansari people they think these people are nut cases they have lost it but actually if you think about it the sansari jeevs are bigger renunciate because they have rejected happiness joy peace god all the good things that they are anyway craving for so that is how it goes it's ironical but that is how it goes yeah and just one more thing i wanted to add like because i think we can share our excitement here right so this is sure. that uh, uh the chapter 12 which we will reach of course eventually but uh, that bhaktashtakam if anyone is interested in learning about the 31 divine virtues that 16. krishna will love if we all develop 16 that's there in chap- sorry okay. chapter 12 or chapter 16 chapter 12 Okay, twelfth also. Sixteenth dot three also have Devik Sampati, all the virtues, uh, Devik Gudas. Yes. Maybe twelfth might also have it. Yeah, please yeah, go ahead. Twelfth, that those eight verses are called Bhaktashtakam. Yeah, I think thirteenth to twentieth. So yeah, we can look at them. Please do check it out. Maybe we can bring it because we can tie it to that in one of our sessions. Okay, so just give me few more shlokas and we can always tie it up. Okay. given a chance we will do that uh, for sure as we go along we will not wait till chapter 12 which might come after 5 or 6 years i don't know so we'll do it sooner than that back and forth yes let's hear from yes annapurna ji radhe radhe please go radhe radhe annapurna ji thank you all right okay uh, i just uh, wanted to say that uh, you know sansari sardi whatever you said it just now that they have given up god itself you know i just wanted to say that you know when they when they have given god you know they have sacrificed their, they never think about god in that way they, they are the biggest losers because they have lost the same thing that you said you know they can never get into god's world you know divine knowledge divine bliss divine love everything you know uh, yeah. they out of uh, all those things you know there is no chance for them to even think of that you know i think that's what i was about to say yes, but then that's why i raised the hand no uh, sure no very point thank you yes there are two choices if somebody has a broken piece of glasses on one side and precious jewels on other side which one they should go for or they would go for the jewels and it is not just an opportunity to go to god's abode or god realization people may say that is a futuristic thing who has seen that even your present will change okay that is the beauty of this path it's not like a promise in the future that you will get you know god and god's abode and this will happen no, that is fine that will happen in due course of time but even your present journey will start becoming beautiful that is the beauty of this path you don't have to wait for that long the journey becomes so beautiful that you don't care about when the destination would come because you will still do seva there and you have already started doing seva and enjoying the bliss of god in whatever capacity you can based on how much intensely you can pursue this path so that is how it goes thank you so much anupurna ji sunita ji i can see you so welcome back to the session um, and then we go to shri ramya ji and subodh ji yes sunita ji had a question yeah. thanks nitin ji um Somehow we can't see you. Uh, oh, now oh, we can see you. There's something yeah, is wrong you. with your video. Yeah. No. Yeah, it, yeah, it just got blurred. So. Yes. Now it is. Yeah. Thank you. Radhe Radhe, Sunita ji, please go. Ahead. I got covered by Maya. Yeah. Yeah, Sunita ji, go ahead, please. Radhe Radhe, all of you. Somehow could manage to come today. Okay. Uh, here I have remembered a beautiful. a saying saying means you know i have this i am just remembering that quoting that uh, somebody says that you know you you spiritual people are ambitionless you have no ambition but i have heard that you know spiritual people are highly ambitious and they are even more ambitious than material people because the spiritual people are ambitious about unlimited and the material people are ambitious about only the limited 
so but and in in context of uh, sacrifice uh, both have to sacrifice because and the sansari jivas you know this uh, sacrifice out of ignorance and they have to they have to sacrifice the spiritual life and the enlightened people and the spiritual people they sacrifice the uh, material things in search of the spiritual uh, spirituality so they they have to sacrifice but um, yeah but in 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 the context of material jivas uh, they are they are really um, as you know they are um, loser because they sacrifice the ultimate thing which is uh, you know and uh, which um, uh, what i have to say i um, love when you said loser yeah, next it, time somebody comes to yeah, me they are loser it's uh, because they oh, sacrifice loser. the the ultimate bliss which the spiritual people get very true very true so yeah it is said that ordinary people they talk about other people um slightly more intelligent people they talk about experiences right creations and things like that and the most intelligent people they talk about god and godly topics okay it takes a lot of intelligence to get to that level actually yes. um and if you are simply gossiping about people that is the most basic primitive level of existence at that point and spiritual spirituality is actually you are aiming for the ambitious means you are you are actually aiming for the best thing right your true potential so it has to be the highest of the highest order loser i think that word i liked it next time somebody says that okay you go you loser okay if somebody comes and tells you what you are doing you know you are wasting your life so let's say you are a loser not us okay but yeah that's a good point they are actually losing out on a huge opportunity from that sense okay let's hear from uh, shri ramya ji and subodh ji shri ramya go ahead radhe radhe ramya ji And then we get into the devotional segment. Please prep, prep up, get ready, and uh, we'll we'll get into that because I know we are a little over our regular time today. Yes, Shri Ramya, go ahead. Yeah, as we uh, discussed, uh, it's not our uh, exterior outlook but our interior outlook which matters more in the divine world. Same way, it is. It's not about what we have renounced externally, but what we have renounced uh, internally. Have I uh, renounced my negativities my pride my anger and all of that and uh, am i uh, uh, and what have i embraced uh, uh, internally well whereas uh, the sansaris uh, they have uh, uh, renounced the sense control and uh, they are thinking that uh, they are uh, gaining uh, uh, sense wise but that is also temporary so there's nothing permanent whereas for the enlightened souls there is something because god says that the spiritual progress even little if we make it will be preserved for lifetimes true and one more thing what i wanted to add is uh, the other way round also uh, like we can see like here you have given the symptoms constantly agitated depressed go downhill and negative outlook on life so so sometimes when we have this negative symptoms also we should uh, see the other way that yeah somewhere uh, i am identifying more uh, with the external uh, world and and that balance is not that so with the symptoms also uh, will help us to see where we are going wrong true very true very nice mm-hmm. great point shri ramya ji hey yeah, that there was a question posed to a spiritualist you know we have gained this car and the latest model of this gadget and this and that what have you gained by doing all this stuff he said i have not gained anything but i have lost what have i lost i have lost anger i have lost pride i have lost that sense of control sense of uh, you know the disappointment so you lose you lose all the bad things and the automatically that becomes your gain and that gain is not something which is limited to this life that gain is permanent for the soul because of krishna's mercy like he says in bhagavad gita all the spiritual gains that you make they became become your perpetual assets not just for this life but across lifetimes to come so wherever we are reborn as a human if you have become less angry you will be less angry on that birth only also if you have learned the art of forgiveness or how to let go you will be born with that tendency krishna preserves it for us that is the beauty of it yes subodhi radhe radhe subodhi please go ahead yeah radhe radhe uh, sir i have one question again uh, in the light of gita wisdom now investing in in share market is like a gambling and the entire mahabharata happened due to gambling itself 
now my intention is good but if you buy a mutual fund now that mutual fund invests in so many different companies and you know many companies for profit making they are anti nature they will like pharmaceutical sector any sector like there are generic medicines and uh, means we don't have control on that then that is that attached as a bad karma to my um, existence here or we should restrict uh, gambling in the light of data wisdom means like investing in shares we should not look at that avenue of income or investment no i think this question was asked to swami in one of the retreats i saw that he said that see if you are a short mm-hmm. seller if you are doing day trading then and it's taking your mind space then yes but if you are you know you're just mm-hmm. trying to long term investor and you want to utilize that money for the seva of hari and guru you know with legal means that should be okay mm-hmm. um, but yeah again mm-hmm. it really depends on what for what purpose you are doing and if your mind space is going in okay and your heart is skipping a beat when the stock market crashes and stuff like that then then actually you are and and you are you are a short seller and stuff like that then it becomes a kind of a gambling right but if you are doing it for the best interest that okay i'm investing it with the best of my you know uh, intentions and i would utilize it god for your service and for my financial security that you need and part of it i will you know put it at your lotus feet and i think it should be fine long mm-hmm. as long as it's not taking your mind space around it so we have to be practical around mm-hmm. these things but yeah short selling and all that stuff is more like gambling right where you are placing a bet mm-hmm. to make quick buck around it and it's taking a lot of your mind space so it's not good for you spiritually either right your heartbeat yes. will get tied to the beat of the stock market in that case yes thank you sir he had answered this question so i remember his answer on this okay thank you sir thank you, you sir both question though thank you very much subodh ji yes rahul ji thank you now the hands are raised for devotional segment nitin ji oh so we have devotional okay kripa has oh. a question jagruj so ji you kripa... want to say actually oh. rahul ji has a devotional presentation but kripa okay, wants kripa to had a question and tell jagruji. story actually you want to sing as well jagruj ji jagruj ji do you have a question please raise your hand or is that for devotional segment okay devotional maybe then kripa had a question or you want to sing kripa kripa ji you want yeah i actually like when nitin ji said how material people make fun of spiritual people i just remember one really funny story so i wanted to share it so when i was like really young i went to this one temple with my mom and then i saw um like this baba ji who had like really long dreadlocks and i went to him and i pulled his hair and he was like he got really mad at me and he yelled at me that but mas patta and then uh later like i got one banana as prasad and then i i was like all excited to eat that banana and then like i peeled it and the banana was all black and i got like chills like i felt like i did something really really bad and to this day i cannot forget that story i mean like that incident that's it okay <laughs> yeah that's an interesting one thank you for sharing that are you going to sing as well kripa today no are you sure okay all right yes. so let's go to our devotional segment then for the benefit of everybody uh last 15 minutes typically we spend doing some chantings um uh, so after the discussion i know we overshot our time but we will do that for for uh, i think we have five hands everybody is for singing or anybody has a question ramesh ji you going to sing right today ashutosh ji is going to sing urvi is going to sing i know that yeah i so just want to chant the shloka so yes, yes. i so hope you are that fine that's perfectly okay and sunita ji so we have five hands and let's get started then with rahul Yes, Rahul. Rahul Ji, Radhe Radhe, please go ahead. You are co-host now. You can share, please. Yeah, I wanted to share the screen also. Let me. Oh, okay, okay. Let me stop share, but you can grab the share regardless. All right. Yes. Can you see the screen now? Yes. Yes. So these are only three slides. Uh, six lines of from Pad of Maharaji, but Maharaji's version. So it goes like this. श्याम मेरे श्याम मेरे श्याम मेरे प्यारे श्याम मेरे श्याम मेरे श्याम मेरे प्यारे श्याम मेरे श्याम मम स्वामी 
सखासुत श्याम मन पिय प्यारे श्याम मम स्वामी सखासुत श्याम मम पिय प्यारे श्याम मम पिय प्यारे मेरी गति तुम मेरी मति तुम मेरी रति तुम प्यारे मेरी गति तुम मेरी मति तुम मेरी रति तुम प्यारे मेरी रति तुम प्यारे राधे राधे very nice rahul and that was a nice way of presenting it your audio was a little feeble but we got most part of it and that's very nicely presented thank you so much loved it you can see a lot of hearts coming your way with that next move to urvi ji next urvi ji is next okay urvi go ahead then quite a few participants today let's hear from all of yes. them yes urvi radhe radhe so i wanted to sing to mere the mere rahul yes go ahead urvi तुम मेरे थे मेरे हो मेरे रहो गे बहकुनाब बहकाने से जब समझ प्रेम में डूब गई तब क्या होगा समझाने से तुमको ही तन मन धन अर्पण तुम ही तुम्हेरे जीवन धन तुमको ही तन मन धन अर्पण तुम ही एक मेरे जीवन धन अब पीछे नहीं हटेगा पग पियवे रह चोट और खाने से तुम मेरे थे मेरे हो मेरे रहोगे बहकुनाब बहकाने से राधे राधे Radhe Radhe Urvi loved it, and one of my favorite lines in this bhajan is, "Ab aur adhik chamkega sona, puni puni agni tapane se." So basically, it says that the more you put me through tribulations and tests, the more I will shine forth like gold. So. that is how we need to look at uh, it, you know the troubles that come our way in perspective beautiful bhajan urvi thank you for doing that sharing that um, loved it and if you get a chance look at swami ji's commentary on this bhajan one one verse he can speak for hours tum mere the mere ho mere rahoge behkuna behkane se on this line itself he can speak for an hour just to explain that very very beautiful thank you urvi for that Okay, let's move on Asha to Ashutosh ji, Radhe Radhe. Ashutosh ji, Ramesh ji, then Himani ji, and then Sunita ji. So we have Radhe a treat coming up today. Yes, Ramesh ji, please Ashutosh ji, please go ahead. Actually, I listen this bhajan in Swami ji's voice in this satsang this Sunday, and I like it very much. Your voice is a little feeble, too. Ashutosh ji. If you can, are you able to hear fine now? Yeah, this it's is fine. better. Yeah, this is much better. Okay. I'll just try. Jaun Guru, Charan Kamal Balihar. Jaun Guru, Charan Kamal Balihar. Jin Charan Naki. शरण गहत मन 
जिन चरण की शरण गहत मन पावत युगल बिहार गुरु जिन चरण को ध्यान धरत मन जिन चरण को ध्यान धरत मन मिटत जगत अंधिया जाऊं गुरु जाऊं गुरु चरण कमल बलिहा थैंक यू बता दे रहा था वेरी नाइस आशीर्वाद जी इट्स अ वेरी ब्यूटीफुल भजन टू फोकस ऑन द लोटस फीट ऑफ गुरु एंड सरेंडर योरसेल्फ अन टू दैट सो लव्ड इट ब्यूटीफुल सो वी हैव अ ट्रीट टुडे सो यस रमेश जी यू ऑलरेडी गेट द बेस्ट डेब्यू अवार्ड टुडे फॉर व्हाटएवर यू गोइंग टू रिसाइट टुडे सो Let's go with that. No, Jagu. Okay. Well, so. yes. Thank you, Sam. So I'm going to recite it from Subhashitam. Sure. So, Ahim sa prathamam pushpam, pushpam indriya nigraha, sarva bhuta daya pushpam, shama pushpam visheshata, gyanam pushpam tapas pushpam, shanti pushpam tathaiva cha. विष्णु हिमसेल्फ to abide by the truth and never swerving from it is the final and eighth flower offering to vishnu so shri vishnu is indeed pleased by offering of all the above mentioned eight flowers narayana khila guru bhagavan namaste thank you thank you so much ramesh ji beautiful uh, recitation as well as thank you for explaining the meaning loved it would love to hear more often from you and thank you so much for that All right. Who's next, Pallavi ji? I'll let you decide. Yeah, Himani ji is next. Yes, Himani ji. Please. Save Sunita ji for last. Okay, sure. Yes, Himani ji, Radhe Radhe, please go ahead. Radhe Radhe, everyone. Radhe Radhe, Himani. I recently listened to Agar Pallavi ji's bhajan with very, oh. very cute lyrics and lot of brajras. So I really liked it. So that's what so I'm. You're getting to brajras as well, Himani. Very nice. Go ahead. I'm, I'm from Braj, so I oh. grew up. listening to all these fajans they are very hit in up so yeah please please go ahead radhe albeli sarkar rate ja radhe 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 albeli sarkar rate ja radhe radhe rate ja radhe radhe rate ja radhe radhe तेरो जन्म सफल है जावे रटे जा राधे 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 अलबेली सरकार रटे जा राधे राधे जो राधे राधे गावे सो प्रेम पदारथ पावे पावे मंडल रास विहार रटे जा राधे राधे शिव गोपी भेष बनायो वृंदावन रास रचायो शिव गोपी भेष बनायो वृंदावन रास रचायो ओ वंशी वट कियो बिहार रटे जा राधे 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 अलबेली सरकार रटे जा राधे राधे जो राधे नाम न हो तो तो कृष्ण बिचारो रो तो 
जो राधे नाम न ना हो तो तो कृष्ण विचारो रो तो और नहीं हो तो प्रेम अवतार रटे जा राधे राधे जिन राधे नाम न ना गायो तिन बिरथा जन्म गवायो जिन राधे नाम न ना गायो तिन बिरथा जन्म गवायो ऐसे जीवन को धिकार रटे जा राधे 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 अलबेली सरकार रटे जा राधे राधे लव डेट हिमानी वेरी नाइस इट्स अ वेरी स्वीट भजन फॉर सम रीजन आई एम हियरिंग इट फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम बट लव इट वेरी शॉर्ट सिंपल एंड स्वीट विद वेरी कैची लिरिक्स अराउंड इट एंड लव इट maybe should sing it once more and uh, it's wow as mm-hmm. i can see so many people are talking hearing that and uh, heard you have started singing bhajans as well so i'd love to hear uh, you know some of maharaj ji's bhajans from prem ras madira i am sure you will do full justice to it so thank you so much for bringing that loved it thank you himani thank you himani ji We're having a big treat today yes pallavi ji who's yes. next ज्योति अब रैन कहा जो सोबत है जो सोबत है सो खोबत है जो जागत है सो पावत है उठ जाग मुसाफिर भोर गई टुक नींद से अखिया खोल जरा और अपने प्रभु में ध्यान लगा उठ तुक तुक नींद से अखिया खोल जरा और अपने प्रभु में ध्यान लगा यह रीत यह प्रीत करण की रीत नहीं ज, जब प्रभु जागत है तू सोवत है उठ जाग मुसाफिर भोर भाई राधे राधे अगेन योर लेसन आर इंस्पायरिंग ऑल दीज भजन लिरिक्स सो थैंक यू कीप देम कमिंग नितिन जी थैंक यू सो मच ज्योति दी एंड थैंक यू फॉर टेकिंग इनिशिएटिव एंड सिंगिंग भजन ऑन दीस सेशंस इट्स एन ऑलवेज एन ऑनर टू हियर यू and we'd love to hear more from you today i think we are going to have at least three debut awards loving every bit of it last two singers we have and thank you again jyoti for that and jagrut ji please go ahead looking radhe radhe right. jagrut ji please go ahead uh we are not able to hear yes, you we are not able to hear you yes please go ahead Oh, still it is unmuted. Not able to hear you. You'll have to fix your audio. Something is not working out. Radhe Radhe. It's check, it's. Check. Yeah. You may want to check the mute on your. thing on your speaker maybe but we are not able to hear you can you hear me now yes yes, yes. now we can hear you hello yes we can we hear can you hear we can hear you now and we want to hear you sing now uh why don't you go to the ne- i'll try to fix my audio no we, it's already fixed it's already fixed go ahead thing is going on it's already fixed jagrut ji Okay, we'll move on to Sunita ji. Yes, Sunita ji, please go ahead. Radhe Radhe, Sunita ji, thank you. Please go ahead. Thank you for waiting. Where is your companion? Radhe Radhe, let me. 
put my bhajan wala mic first. Okay. Okay, we have B BMW and then we have for Sunita ji BWM. Bhajan wala mic. Please go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, today, a second. I'm going to sing about uh, Meera Bai. So tell, let me tell something about her. She is one of the greatest devotees of Lord. You know, in fact, she was mad about Krishna. So her life was not so easy, and it was so fascinating to hear about her. So uh, she had undergone so many sufferings through her in-laws and uh, one of the guys called Rana, uh, he sent some poison through his representative telling uh, her that it is a Panchamrit from um, Krishna. Uh, Thakurji's temple and uh, anything, so Mirabai was so mad about Krishna that anything related to Krishna, she just without a single thought in her mind, she just drank that um, poison and, uh, and and seeing her devotion, Krishna was bound to uh, convert that poison into nectar. So that is the height of her devotion. So uh, let's listen some lines about her. Okay. Sure. <clears throat> Prabhucharno me bandhan kiya kare Bekar ho mukh hai jo rahe Birth baato me Mukh wo hai jo hari naam ka Sumiran kiya kare Heere moti Heere moti se nahi Shobha hai haath ki, hai haath jo bhagwan ka poojan kiya kare. Mar kar bhi amar naam hai us jeev ka jag mein. Prabhu prem mein baldaan jo jeevan kiya kare. Aisi lagi lagan, aisi lagi lagan, meera ho gai magan, aisi lagi lagan, meera ho gai magan, wo to gali gali hari gun, gaane lagi mehlo me pali, बन के जो गन चली महलों में पली बन के जो गन चली मीरा रानी दीवानी कहाने लगी है सिलागी लगन मीरा हो गई मगन कोई रोके नहीं कोई टोके नहीं मीरा गोविंद गोपाल गाने लगी बैठी संतों के संग रंगे मोहन के रंग मीरा प्रेमी प्रीतम को मनाने लगी वो तो गली गली हरी गुन गाने लगी ऐसी लागी लगन Mira ho gai magan Rana ne vish diya Mano amrit priya Mira saagar me sarita Samane lagi Dukh laakho sahe Mukh se gobind kahe Mira gobind gopal gaane lagi वो तो गली गली हरी गुन गाने लगी है सिलागी लगन मीरा 
हो गई मगन ऐसे लागी लगन मेरा हो गई मगन वो तो गली गली हरी गुण गाने लगी महलों में पली बन के जो गन चली मीरा रानी दीवानी कहाने लगी ऐसे लागी लगन मीरा हो गई मगन हरे कृष्णा राधे राधे मीरा भाई हरे कृष्णा राधे राधे सुनीता जी यू आर अमेजिंग you know you've got a gift of voice and you're blessed and uh, it's it's a great seva you're doing for all of us devotees here by taking us you know to a different world all together we just have to listen to it and i mean i don't have words to express that so beautiful it's always beautiful to hear you and just love it no matter how many times you sing it just keeps on getting better the ras right so wonderful great thank you thank you thank you thank you so much now we are moving so to much sanita ji yeah getting yes, back to chakra ji yes uh can you hear me now we can Absolutely. hear yes. you extremely well now chakra ji and can't wait to hear you as well Uh, okay okay my voice is not that good but i was very inspired by everybody so i thought i will try one um so it's i have a very really, very infectious group jagrut ji so i, I i'm telling you already okay so please go ahead <laughs> yeah so swami ji was here in sunnyvale and uh, attended the um, science of happiness uh, lecture so there was a sheet we gave he gave uh, yes. so on that there is a bhajan and afterwards i found it on youtube also so i like it very much so i'll share with all of you um it's called <clears throat> radha vallabh kunj bihari murli dhar govardhan dhari radha vallabh कुंज बिहारी मुरलीधर गोवर्धन धारी ओ गिरिधारी ओ बनवारी हमारी ही बार मौन कस धारी शाम शाम मनोहर जोरी का बहु कल कही हमारी होरी साधन ही न दीन मराधे तुम करुणामयी प्रेम अगा राधा वल्लभ कुंज बिहारी मुरलीधर गोवर धन धारी ओ रघुनंदन प्राण परीते तुम बिनु जियत ही बहुत दिन बीते सीता राम चरण रति मोरे अनु दिन बड़ी अनुग्रह तो रे राधा वल्लभ कुंज बिहारी मुरलीधर गोवर धन धारी Jagruji, very nice. It's a beautiful, beautiful bhajan. 
and uh, it just reminded me of swami ji when he does that so nicely right that voice you know radha raman kunj vihari murli dhar govar dhan dha so beautiful bhajan thank you for bringing that i'm going to search it up again reminded me of that and it has a beautiful line right hamari hi bar kyu mon ka sudhari it's a very very nice um, line right it's like a devotee is saying god when my turn came why have you become silent now thank you for bringing that it's a beautiful bhajan loved it and thank you very much all right i see one more hand abhishek go for it last but not radhe 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 abhishek ji please go this is more infectious than corona virus okay so go ahead. <laughs> okay so this is a uh, version from premras uh, madira one of my favorite uh, gayo hari mo pe ja do dar gayo hari हो जमुना असनान करन गई हो जमुना असनान करन गई तह रह तह रह नंद कुमार गयो हरि तह रह नंद कुमार गयो हरि पिया दृग पिया पिया दृग पिया रस रूप माधुरी पिया दृग पिया रस रूप माधुरी जिगन बचाय निहार गयो हरि जिगन बचाय निहार गयो हरि मो पे जादूडा गयो हरि मो पे जादूडा radhe radhe very nice abhishek it's a beautiful beautiful bhajan and i can see yeah i can see a lot of claps and a lot of hearts coming your way and you sing well abhishek that lay taal is there you know you can actually do roop dhyan the way you were singing it's a very very beautiful bhajan urvi would love it right this kind of bhajan sar her favorite so i can imagine that all of us did great i know we have overshot today with time and we still have about more than 50 participants sticking around which is very nice thank you so much and when we do our maybe we will announce a date for our two uh, year anniversary somewhere around christmas or before that and please put your name if you have not yet uh, we will do a bhajan special that day and i can see so many bhajan enthusiasts in our group now so we'll make it a special treat that day we will just immerse in devotion and bhakti ras that day A little bit of philosophy here and there, but uh, thank you again for your enthusiastic participation. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. We'll get into some more deeper aspects about desire and other things. We'll match philosophy and devotion. I'm glad we started this segment because you know just discussing philosophy can become a little dry. But you now we have so many people. They bring in the devotional rush, so it's very enjoyable. So thank you again. Radhe Radhe, wonderful day. Great rest of your evening. Stay inspired, stay blessed, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Yes, Pallavi ji, anything from your side? Yeah, thank you, Nitin ji, for another awesome, awesome session. Thanks to all of you. And thank you for sticking around. I know it's very late for you at mm-hmm. East Coast, so. Yeah, for me it's eleven fifty a.m. Uh, sorry, p.m. So yeah. Thank you, But, and yeah. uh, we'll try to wrap it I, up. Totally, so it's my opportunity. Uh, I enjoy every moment of it. So thank you so much. Everyone, stay blessed, stay uh, safe, and we see you tomorrow in the session. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Thank you.